everybody, it's the Gamesmith, and welcome to another episode. Today we're going to be turning those rocky stalagmites that we made in episode one into icy stalagmites for episode two. So today we're going to be starting with a piece of cut wood that I had left over from a package of hobby wood. It's rigid, it's not going to fall apart, and it will take the heat and the weight of the shells when I'm putting it together. I also have my dollar store horn or turret or screw shells. For our second episode of the Gamesmith, we're going to be using a simple glue gun in order to attach these seashells to this wooden base. So I discovered in making the first set of stalagmites that it's best to apply as much glue as you can to the shell and then let gravity pull it down to the surface and it'll stick in place. It's important to let this stand so that it doesn't bend and fall over the, all over the place. It's also helpful to have a fan nearby so it'll harden the glue quicker. You can also save some time by figuring out a placement for your seashells ahead of time instead of placing them willy-nilly like I'm doing here. So I've stuck this to the wooden base only to discover that it's not going to stick in place because I don't have enough glue so I need to add some more. I'm not going to worry about getting rid of the old glue, I'll just cover this over with a new glue application and stick it on here. Now you can save yourself some time by planning out your shell placement ahead of time as I mentioned don't forget that adding new shells to your build will actually melt the glue of any previously placed shells. So when you're placing them, make sure that you are getting them in the plate in the location that you actually want them. You do have a bit of flex time because the glue doesn't harden instantly. So I'll skip ahead to reinforce the base by spreading out some glue along the base. I'm going to use a popsicle stick here in order to create an interesting icy texture across the wooden base. Now if you can think of another method of texturizing your base, I would very much like to hear from you in the comment section down below. Now we'll keep reinforcing our base and texturizing our surface. And just a popsicle stick so that we don't get ourselves burned with the hot glue. and a simple dragging technique will produce lots of little crevices. In preparation for the base coat, now that the base is done, I want to remove the glue strings and the clumps from the side of this build so that it'll sit flat on the game surface. When you're finished, you simply just spray the piece white, either with a matte white or gloss paint. The gloss paint will really help with giving it that icy uh, reflective shine. But I'm going to be using uh, some glitter glue on this, so I'm just going to end up spraying it with a flat matte white paint. These little clumps in here drive me crazy, so I want to get those out of there. Now 
Now that we have our base coat of our icy stalagmites done, we can use some dollar store craft paint. In this particular case, I'm going to be using a light blue in order to dry brush to highlight the awesome features of the seashells. So we put some paint on our palette and a flat with a flat brush we want to load the brush with very little paint and remove as much as we can in order to paint our stalagmites. You want to drag the brush lightly over the surface features so that they become more easily seen. For a full explanation on dry brushing, I will put a link at the end of the video to show you all of the different features that dry brushing can be used for. So I'll drink a haste potion here in order to paint this. And all we want to do is, with very little paint, drag it across our surface so all we're catching is the high points on our surface features. We don't want to clump this together, like I did just here at the bottom here, so I'm going to end up going back over that with some white paint later. In terms of dry brushing, the less paint, the better, and it will really capture those surface features and really make the texture pop off the surface. Now I'm going to do some touch up with this white paint to get rid of those clumpy areas where I have way too much blue. wash this out with some white paint. The blue will still show through, but that's perfectly okay. Now I want to add some glitter. After the paint is dry, we want to get some glitter glue. Any brand will do. And this is what will give that build that icy appearance. If you've used some white gloss paint for your base coat, the glitter glue will actually help emphasize the glossiness of the paint that you used. And if you didn't, that's perfectly fine too. The glitter glue will actually capture the light quite nicely and it will give it uh, that icy effect that we're looking for. You want to make sure you cover the entire surface and make sure you get down deep into those cracks. And when you're done, you're going to want to make sure to clean that brush very thoroughly because the glitter glue will harden it like rock. And after we're finished applying our glitter glue layer, we are done! So that was my take on icy stalagmites. If you like what you saw today, please hit that like button. And if you really like what I'm doing here at the Gamesmith, please hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, I'd really appreciate it if you put those in the comment section down below. I really like hearing from all of you and responding to your questions. And if you really like what I'm doing here, please check out my Patreon page and consider becoming a Patreon to support what we're doing here at the Gamesmith. Now, if you've stuck around for this long, I'll reward you by telling you that the next episode is going to be my take on pillars and columns. I'll see you at the table.